We are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Today, we're continuing our series on casual and complimentary prepping, and we're answering the question of how does a freezer fit into a prepper's storage? Now, freezers come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, there's upright freezers, there's refrigerator freezers, you know, the top freezer or the bottom freezer. There are side-by-side -side freezers, refrigerators and freezers, uh, and then there are chest freezers. What we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about just standalone freezers, not have anything to do with your refrigerator. All right? So let's look at an uh, upright freezer. It's shaped like a refrigerator. It takes less floor space, okay? An upright freezer. Let's talk about its advantages. Well, an upright freezer, uh, one of the big advantages is it's easier to place your stuff in the freezer. Uh, upright freezers take a lot less floor space than a, than a stand than an equivalent cubic foot uh, chest freezer because chest freezers are long. Okay, they have to be narrow enough to get through a doorway. Uh, but they're long, so they're a little harder to get through doorways. Uh, a upright freezer is a little easier to maneuver around and get it placed, but all of those require a dolly, so it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Upright freezers are also easier to place all your items. There are a bunch of shelves so that you can put this group on one shelf and the next shelf down, you put another group of things and the next shelf, so it's easier to store your stuff in a chest type or in a uh, in an upright freezer but now upright freezers have several drawbacks especially where the preppers concerned okay let's talk about the disadvantages of an upright freezer well there are several disadvantages the very first one is that when, even though you can organize an upright freezer very easily, there's still wasted space because you have to have room to move your stuff in and out of the freezer. So there's a lot of wasted space in that. Secondly, every time you open the door, cold air falls out on the ground. Now, that has a twofold problem. First off, it causes the freezer to use more energy. Secondly, it causes the air to move and causes condensation inside the freezer and causes your stuff to freezer burn more easily. So those are the two big drawbacks for an upright freezer. Now let's talk about chest freezers. Now when we talk about a chest freezer, there are several advantages and especially for preppers there are some advantages. First off, there's less air circulation when you open the door because cold air can't fall out because cold air would have to rise up to fall out of a chest freezer and cold air doesn't rise. So it maintains a more constant temperature and there's no air circulation within it so there's less freezer burn. Uh, another thing is chest freezers for that very reason tend to use less energy than their traditional upright freezers. Uh, they generally cost about $100 less for the same cubic feet size uh, than an upright freezer. Uh, and they tend to be just a little bit quieter. An upright freezer sounds a lot like uh, a refrigerator running. But what about the disadvantages to a chest freezer? Well, organization is the number one disadvantage to a chest freezer. When you put stuff in, sometimes you gotta dig for it. And you gotta be careful if you put something in like bread. Uh, when you put bread in, you have to be careful that it's not going to get mashed or else it freezes in that mashed bread look. Uh, another drawback to chest freezers is that they have to be manually defrosted. Most upright freezers have a defrost cycle, but chest freezers, you have to manually defrost them, which is not a big deal if you do it the way we do. Now, Crystal and I have four chest freezers. I know, you look at me and you go, why do you have so many? 
Well, when I was a kid, Mom and Pa had two chest freezers, great big ones, like 20 cubic feet, out on their back porch. Well, one of them went down one year, and they lost two whole pigs. Okay? Two whole pigs, because one freezer went down and they didn't notice it was out. So, if you spread that out among four freezers, there's less chance of that happening. So, we have four, and let me explain about each one. We have a, a five cubic foot freezer, which is a small one. We have a seven cubic foot freezer, and we have an 11 cubic foot freezer. And that's what I'm going to talk about uh, as far as preppers are concerned. Uh, we're going to talk about the cost to operate, what they'll hold, those kinds of things, so that you'll get some idea about what you could do for your family. Now, the modern thought about families and freezers is, is that you ought to have two and a half cubic feet for every person in your home. So if it's just two people, a five cubic foot freezer is supposed to be enough. Well, Crystal and I are by ourselves, just me and her. Every now and then the kids come and visit. You know how that is. You're getting older, your kids come and visit you every now and then. But most of the time it's just you and your spouse. And uh, we have four freezers. And I'm going to explain about that in just a minute. Okay, let's look at uh, the freezers. What we're going to look at is we're going to look at cubic feet, cost to operate, and cost to buy. Now, I'm going to consider this all here in Kentucky. All right, we're not, uh, I'm not, I can't tell you how it's going to be over in England or how it's going to be in Australia or, or how it's even going to be in North Carolina. The truth is, the cost of freezers are very region, regional. Now, right now, it's hard to find a freezer, okay? If you went looking for a freezer right now in this pandemic, People have gone crazy, and they've bought them. You can't hardly find one in stock. So, let's, but we're going to continue on, and we're going to talk about the pre-pandemic prices, because that's what I know about, uh, because I haven't been out there to, to check the post-pandemic prices. But I know if you get online and look at freezers, they're all out of stock. So, let's talk about that for a minute. Here locally, uh, our electricity is 8.99 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, a standard little freezer is going to use one to two kilowatt hours per day. Okay? So, we're talking about 16 cents a day to operate a small freezer and maybe 30 cents a day to operate a larger one. So, so let's look at that. Let's start off with a five cubic foot freezer. A five cubic foot freezer is going to hold somewhere in the neighborhood of 175 pounds worth of food. That's a lot of food. As a matter of fact, a five cubic foot freezer can hold half a pig. Okay, and I'm talking about, I'm talking about when I say half a pig, I mean half of a, uh, of a 300 pound hog that's been killed, slaughtered, you can hold that in a five cubic foot freezer, half of it. Uh, there'll still be a little bit of room left over to store you some onions and peppers and some other things. But that includes things like bacon, ham, ground burger, uh, pig burger, some awesome stuff if you've never had it. Uh, so, but what does it cost to operate? Well, that little freezer is going to cost somewhere around $22 a year to operate. All right, $22 a year. And there's a lot of savings, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Now let's talk about a 7 cubic foot freezer. Well, a 7 cubic foot freezer is going to hold about 245 pounds worth of food. It will hold almost a whole hog and have a little room left over. But the cost of a seven cubic foot freezer, pre-pandemic, of course, is approximately $200. Uh, I think we bought ours for $199 when we moved here to the homestead. Prior to that, we had a uh, 
15 cubic foot freezer on our previous place while we were both still working. Uh, the cost to operate a 7 cubic foot freezer is about $34 a year. So it's not a big deal. Uh, it's less than uh, 3 or $4 a month. Okay, so, you know, it's not a big deal. Then you've got an 11 cubic foot freezer, or we've got an 11 cubic foot freezer. It holds approximately 385 pounds worth of food. Or in other words, a big hog and a lamb or deer. Okay, so it holds quite a bit. Uh, they cost about $500, between four and $500. Uh, to get a freezer that large. Uh, the cost to operate is about $41 a year, especially for the modern ones. The one we've got is a little bit older. It was bought back in the, probably in the early 2000s. Okay, you saw the type chest freezers that we have. Let's talk about why a chest freezer is right for a prepper. Well, first off, a chest freezer is less cost to purchase. Uh, you can't hardly find an upright five cubic foot freezer or a, a seven cubic foot freezer. Most of your uprights are 12 cubic feet and larger. Okay, my largest freezer is 11 cubic feet for the simple reason that uh, I don't want everything in my freezers, my freezer to go bad. If I lose, I only lose a fourth of what I've got rather than losing half or all of it. Okay? So they're less cost. They're, they use less energy. Chest type freezers use less energy than an upright freezer. Uh, you can store more per cubic foot in a chest freezer than you can with an upright. So they're more about what a prepper might need and they're also more energy efficient. So <clears throat> you could actually run a chest freezer off of a solar array. For us, we've got a five cubic foot freezer, one. We've got two seven cubic foot freezers and one 11 cubic foot freezer. What does it cost us to run all of those freezers? Well, it costs us about $8 a month. Okay? $8 a month. In the scheme of things, $8 a month is not a lot. We keep our freezers in our basement. Uh, our basement, if our heat's on uh, or our air conditioning's on, our basement stays between 55 and 68 degrees year-round. Uh, I'm sure it would probably stay between 45 and 65 if our, we didn't have heat in there. So the basement is a pretty constant temperature. So the freezers are using what uh, a constant amount of energy. So it's a lot easier on them and they're more successful. Now, if you've got a freezer outside, it's going to cost more to operate in the summer than in the winter. Okay, if you've got them on a back porch, on an unheated back porch, Mom and Paul kept their freezer on an unheated back porch. Uh, you might keep it in a garage. All right, just where you've got room for it. But what do we put in a freezer? Well, we store all kinds of vegetables. If you come to our channel, you'll find that we store, that we uh, grow a great big garden. We store all kinds of vegetables. As an example, green beans, fried corn, corn on the cob, broccoli, cauliflower, okra, cabbage, summer squash, zucchini, eggplant, tomatoes, peppers, onions, grapes, autumn olives, and all types of fruit. Apples, peaches, pears, okay, plums. We store all kinds of stuff like that in our freezer. And I know you look at me and go, well, why do you store grapes in the freezer? They make wine the ultimate prepper trading thing okay but the real value to a freezer as far as preppers go is storing protein all right 
In storing all the vegetables, you're storing vitamins. But in storing a pig or storing lamb or or goat or uh, beef, uh, now our freezers are not going to be able to store half a beef, okay? They're not going to be able to do that. I can trade pig to somebody that, that has beef, all right? We trade for beef. Now, so you can store all this protein. Now, even if you're not a prepper, there are some advantages to having a freezer. Number one, you go to the store less often. Real important in a pandemic. Number two, you can buy stuff that's on sale, store it in your freezer for six months to a year. That sale meat, you can buy a whole bunch of hamburger, put it in your freezer, and you've got a hamburger for a lot less cost than before. So there are a lot of reasons why a freezer could fit into any lifestyle. But for preppers, these chest freezers, they fit in perfect. You could even run a chest freezer off solar. And now let's talk about that. Now, you can run a chest freezer off solar. All right? Uh, but there are some drawbacks to solar energy. And if you use those, that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to tell you there are some drawbacks to solar energy, storing energy. Uh, one of the drawbacks would be that maybe your freezer doesn't have enough energy to go and might cause a slow defrost. Well, you can take care of that by taking a uh, clear plastic container, freezing a little ice in it, and laying a quarter on it. And then set it in your freezer upright so that when, if it defrosts, because a defrosted freezer that refreezes could sure set you up for botulism or all kinds of nasty things, okay? So, you put that quarter on that ice, and if you go away for, say, a week, and you come back, you open your freezer. If the quarter is still on top, it means that your freezer never defrosted. But if the quarter has sunk down into the ice, and it's now covered with a layer of ice, you know that that freezer defrosted, and uh, everything in it is probably ruined. Okay, that's just a simple tip. For you preppers out there, that's one of those things that you really ought to know. Now, why is a, a chest freezer really good for solar? Well, first off, you can use a chest freezer as a refrigerator. If you take and get an external thermostat, a 110 volt thermostat, then you can adjust that thermostat up to say 40, 40 degrees and Plug your freezer into that with the temperature probe inside the freezer and it will keep your chest freezer at 40 degrees rather than letting it run all the way down into minus 10 or minus 20, whatever the freezer gets to. It will keep it at 40 degrees and you can use that chest freezer just like a refrigerator without using a tenth of the energy that an upright refrigerator would cost. When operating uh, a solar generator. Uh, let's talk about, we're going to talk about uh, what these freezers use. First off, one of the freezers I've got here, I've got a 5 cubic foot, a 7 cubic foot, and an 11 cubic foot. And they use anywhere between 1 and 2 kilowatt hours per day of energy. Now, that is awesome when you think about it. Uh, one kilowatt out a one kilowatt solar array that means it's producing 1000 watts at the peak of sun okay it's producing a lot less in the early morning a lot less in the in the afternoon in the late afternoon in the evening and it's producing but you can be on a pretty sunny day you can take that 1kw solar array and for about 6 hours generate six kilowatt hours worth of energy. That's pretty doggone good. So if you've got a one kilowatt hour a day freezer, you go, well, I could run that on it. No, let's, let's get things cleared up here. Solar is wonderful. 
you've got this one kilowatt array on a good sunny day. Uh, it's going to generate six kilowatt hours worth of energy on a not so sunny day. It's going to generate about three kilowatt hours worth of energy. But, but then on what you do with that, you have to store it in batteries. And battery storage of solar energy for the local homesteader prepper is only going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 48% efficient. Okay, it's not, not a super efficient process. It's just not a super efficient process. Uh, for example, a one kilowatt hour going to make six kilowatt hours worth of energy, but the losses in storing that in a battery and then retrieving it, what you're going to wind up with is 2.88 kilowatt hours worth of energy that you can put into an appliance. Does that make sense? So you could run two five cubic foot freezers on a one kilowatt solar array. Okay, does that make sense? But now then there'll be those days that you don't get six kilowatt hours and you'll have to top your batteries off with a generator. And, and it'll have to be a fossil fuels generator. Okay, I don't know of any uh, fire generators or any steam generators that could work for the modern homesteader. I just, I don't know of any. So, in reality, if, if I wanted to keep all four of my freezers, and I keep pointing over here because they're right here in the basement. This is where I do my videos. Uh, if I wanted to keep all four of my freezers running, then what I would have to do is I would have to step up to a three kilowatt array. And that would allow me to run all my freezers, to run uh, some lights, and some other stuff. Let's talk about the takeaway here. What does a, why should a prepper have a freezer? Well, of course, it's storing protein. You can use a solar array for a long-term uh, solution, you know, five or six years, however long your batteries are gonna last. In a true SHTF, there's gonna be all kinds of uh, reasons why a solar array, it's quiet, Okay, there's all kinds of reasons, but it's also very obvious that there's a solar array too. See, so they have to be out in the sun where people can see them. But at the same time, your solar array is only going to be as good for as long as the batteries are good. And typical batteries, five, six, seven years at the most. So, but a prepper should include that. Let's say you're doing your prepping and... Uh, the electricity went off and you're going to lose everything in your freezer. Well, the truth is, some of the things in your freezer, you can go ahead and dehydrate. Okay, you can still dehydrate them. Uh, the meat in your freezer, you can can it as long as you've got canning jars and a way to boil water to, make, to, to can them. So, you can can your meat in a pressure canner. So, if the freezer fails, you can't, or the power fails, you know you can start canning that meat and save it all in mason jars. Uh, so a freezer does fit well into an overall prepper plan. Uh, you just have to be prepared for what happens if the freezer fails. Uh, because they do fail. That's just one of the things that happens. Any kind of electronic device or electric device at some point is going to fail. Just the way it is, it's the nature of technology. So a prepper needs to consider a freezer as one of their prepping essentials. Okay, now if you like this stuff, this homestead and do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and su subscribe. We do this homestead and prepping Stuff every week, sometimes one, sometimes five videos. Just depends on what's going on in the homestead that week. Now, if you hit the little bell when you come to the channel, it'll notify you when we upload a video. And we upload every Sunday. 
Now, with that being said, it's time for me to get on to the next thing.